supply rises whereas demand declines as the price increases now price is not just numbers price is not just about cost price is not just about the tag that is hanging on the product for a buyer the first thing that you need to understand as what we are called as consumers our resources are limited market is always a collection of goods which have a substitute over each other good morning and welcome to the first session in unit 1 first semester bba business economics where we are going to speak about supply and demand the entire conversation of economics is dependent on these two words called as supply and demand so what exactly is the law of supply and demand and why law of supply and demand matters to us a lot when we are studying economics now the law of supply and demand combines two fundamental economic principle that would describe how changes in the price of a resource or commodity or a product will affect its supply and demand so we are going to talk about a very interesting factor called as price now the price factor actually matters in economics why because in respect to change in price automatically there would be a change in the supply and demand so that's where we are going to look into the supply and demand factor supply rises whereas demand declines as the price increases now if you look into these two factors supply and demand they are inversely proportional to each other when the price increases the supply will also increase but in the case of demand it's opposite when the price increases the demand will decrease supply constricts while demand grows as the price drops now what will happen is as the price keeps on the supply will start reducing whereas if the price starts falling downwards the demand would start growing up now when we go to the levels of supply and demand that's very important for us why because it can be plotted in a graph with a dot line all together where you show that there is a line which is mapping so let me just draw that graph for you here now when you look here demand is always a curve that is sloping downwards towards the left whereas supply is just opposite a curve that is moving rightwards now what happens here is that there is an equilibrium point here which meets at a point let's say p now this is the point at which the supply and demand curve will meet now this equilibrium point is the place where the price gets accepted and then the consumer goes on with the product so the point at which the supply and demand meet is called as the equilibrium point or rather i would call it as the price discovery point why because this is the point at which the price gets accepted in the market and people start buying it now moving further the law of demand which is the most important thing as we come across in economics the law of demand holds that demand level for a product or a resource will decline as its price rise and the rise as the price drops now this is exactly where the inverse and the converse function coming into picture all together the law of demand holds that very clearly let's understand that the demand level for a product or resource will decline once the price increases demand decreases once the price decreases demand increases so that's where the law of demand comes in whereas the law of supply says that higher prices boost the supply on the economic good and lower ones will diminish the supply so if the price is also lower the supply will also come down now moving further here we also need to understand when we are talking about this demand supply function a market clearing price balances supply and demand and can be graphically represented what we saw here and degree to which the change in prices translate in the demand function is known as the product's price elasticity now this word is also equally important the relativity function that we are talking about change in price 
towards that of the change in the product. Now that's exactly where we are trying to talk about the change in demand or supply for a product versus that of the price. Now the demand for basic necessities are relatively inelastic so you're not going to see any drastic change and it is less responsive to the change in their price factor. Now moving further, understanding the law of supply and demand. It seems obvious that the price satisfies both the buyer and seller at any transaction, matching the supply and demand, that's the first level. Interaction between supply, demand and price in a free marketplace has been observed for thousands of years. Now what is very interesting here is that no buyer or seller is just going to accept what the market says, just like that. Now you go to a market and you want to know the price of a product. You ask for the product and then the seller says that this product is priced at 50 rupees. Now you are not just going to blindly accept the price just because the shopkeeper has told it. You would try to bargain, you would try to find out from different shops whether it is the same price, can I get it at a lower price. So somewhere there would be a bargain, a give and take would definitely happen. And this has been the procedure, this has been the way how it has been performing for so many years. So that's exactly where I say in a free marketplace until the price comes to an equilibrium point, it settles down, we are not going to get into the transaction level. Now, many medieval thinkers just think about this factor that it is price is just based on cost and equitable returns on which the sale was transacted, just like the modern day critics, they talk about marketing pricing. One understanding of price as a signaling mechanism matching the supply demand is very, very good because it's in work of enlightenment of the economists who have studied and summarized this relationship. Now, price is not just numbers. Price is not just about cost. Price is not just about the tag that is hanging on the product. Price is the trigger point for any consumer to decide whether I will go for that product or not. Now, many of us do not know the technical aspects of the product, but we definitely know what is the financial aspect of the product, whether I would be able to afford it or not. So moment the price comes under the triggered zone, moment the price comes under an acceptable zone for me, I would be delighted, I would be excited to take that product because that matches my mindset. So price is the signaling concept in economics that tells each and every buyer that yes, you have achieved what you wanted. So every consumer in the market would definitely try to look in for some aspect called as an equitable fair price, which will make the market even more interesting. Now, moving further, we are also going to talk about price change. Now, price discovery based on supply demand curve assumes a marketplace in which buyers and sellers are free to transact and are not depending on the price. Products with high price elasticity of demand will see wider fluctuations in the market. Basic necessities will be relatively inelastic because people cannot do without them easily. And so a less relative change is coming into picture. Now into a free market zone as we are trying to speak about, many a times what happens is that people oversee the price, they just over tend to go above board, they just want to buy it all together. Now for the products where there is a high level of elasticity coming into picture, suddenly you go to the marketplace and you see a 50% discount or you see a 80% deep discount. The fluctuations in the mindset of the consumer and the buying behavior entirely changes. Now you will have people who will question about the quality of the product. You will have people asking you the question, why 50%, why not 80%, why not 100%. Now what is happening here is that elasticity actually leads to the question in the mind of the consumers whether I should buy it or not because there is too much of variations, too much of gap, too much of space given in the mind to think whether I should go for this product or not. 
On the other hand, when I'm talking about the necessity based products for a consumer, he is not going to think too much because I cannot live without it. Now, when I talk about milk, sugar or coffee or the products which I use on my daily purpose, I'm not going to bargain. I'm not going to argue there much because I need those products. Those are essential commodities. I cannot live without them. So in that category, when I'm going to take my product, I'm not going to get into a talk of elasticity. Rather, I would like to take it from the standpoint whether it is available or not. But moment I'm going to get into luxury goods, moment I'm going to get into goods which can be taken as a want category for me, I would look in for the elasticity factors altogether. Now, the law of demand. The law of demand holds that for any product that is inversely proportional. Now, buyers have finite resources so that their spending on a given product or commodity is limited as well as. So higher prices, you know, prices will reduce the demand as a result. Demand rises as product becomes more affordable. For a buyer, the first thing that you need to understand as what we are called as consumers, our resources are limited. We don't have an infinite source of money coming into our pocket. So for each one of us, please keep this in mind that we need to keep the money as the main constraint factor. So if you are going to price the product way above what is expected, the buyer is not going to come and purchase your product. The buyer will feel that I will wait for an appropriate time where the price comes down, it becomes affordable for me, then I would like to make a purchase. So every time when the seller is going to increase the price beyond a particular level, that signals a negativity towards the buyer. The buyer would restrict himself going to the marketplace. He would wait for an appropriate time when the prices fall down. So always remember this factor that price will always not be accepted as and when you keep on changing. There is a limit. There is a limit to which you would see that the buyer is accepting or not. Now, the next thing is that. The changes in demand as a function of product is related to the buyers, very much yes. Some exception will exist, one of them is the Giffen goods. These are typically low priced, you know, staples known as the inferior goods all about, but then nevertheless, people are not going to worry much about it. The substitution effect comes into product into Giffen good when the price of inferior good rises, demand goes up because consumers make more use of it in case of the costlier alternatives. Now, market is always filled with substitutes in nature. Now, that's very important for us to know. Market is always a collection of goods which have a substitute over each other. You cannot be so definitive enough that this is the only kind of product that's available in the market. So when people find goods which are cheaper than the original goods, now, for example, when coffee becomes costlier, tea is definitely a substitute for me. When an ink pen becomes costlier, I would like to go in for a ball pen. Now, what I'm trying to do is that I'm going to substitute for the purpose of the usage. I'm not just thinking that substitution is every time needed, but when it is required, when the options are given to the consumer, I'm going to make the best use of the options. So moment I talk about substitution coming into picture, people will continue to buy those substitute goods as long as the original goods still tend to remain costly. So in order to substitute this effect, these goods are an exception factor which will come into the demand and supply function. Now, other one is the Veblen goods that are the opposite end of income and wealth spectrum. Why? Because these are luxury goods that gain in value and consequently generate higher demand levels. Why? Because as they rise in price, because the price of these luxury goods signals and many even increase the owner status. Now, this is a luxury statement which I would like to talk about given by the great person known as the Thorstein Veblen, one of the person who decided and came upon a very beautiful concept called as conceptuous consumption altogether. There are many luxury goods in this world where you would tend to see that it's the higher end part of the income. So what happens when I own those luxury goods, the value and the demand goes up because it's more related to the status, the ego and the societal concept. 
So when you own these goods, automatically the price of these goods starts going up because of the luxury status added to it. And these are not like the normal goods here. So Weblen is definitely the opposite end of the spectrum as we are talking about. Now the law of supply where you would see that the product of quantity supply comes into picture. It relates to the price change. The law of supply is direct and not inverse. So higher the price, higher the quantity, lower the price, lower the quantity that supply. Now higher the price gives the suppliers an incentive. So they try to manufacture more product. They try to sell more of the product into the market because that is giving them an edge to supply more supply slopes are upwardly sloping as a result of it so you would see that yes this is an opportunity that has been given to me in order to make the most of it in the market now the law of supply also says that constraints may hit with price elasticity there might be supply shocks coming into the picture that is because of you know sudden price changes or technical factors coming into picture inventory getting disrupted all those kind of factors can hit the supply chain altogether the law of supply will get disrupted at that point of time now we'll also come to this equilibrium price which is very very essential for us to talk equilibrium price if i'm going to talk about this is where as i told you the point at which the price matches so this point is very important for us because that's the market clearing price the level of at which we are talking about this is where the market clears the price and tells the consumer very very clearly that this is the available price the right price for you to decide and you can make the purchase and once the consumer has decided that yes he will go with this price he sets this as the equilibrium price in the mind and he keeps on to shop now the factors affecting the supply definitely if you start seeing the price of inventory supply cost will definitely hit you on the factor price elasticity will also depend on the number of sellers the aggregate productive capacity that's coming into the market plus if it is lowered or if there are a lot of competitive dynamics that are coming into picture the tax regulation government policies all these things can definitely affect the supply now factors affecting demand you will start talking about consumer income preferences willingness to substitute one product over the other. So all these things when it starts coming, it will start seeing that the product's market penetration because marginal utility of this goods diminishes as the quantity owned increases. Right. So now when you see the example, the first car is more life altering than the fifth addition to the fleet. The living room TV is more useful than the fourth one in the garage. Now that's exactly what I'm trying to talk about. The first time when you buy the utility levels toward it is very high. But as you keep on buying more and more cars, significantly the value comes down because you're not really interested. The same thing applies to the electronics world also. Now, if you look, why is the explanation, what is the explanation that I can give about in terms of the law of supply and demand, higher prices and the lower prices factor. So it's always the price that determines the market and it is not just the product and the other quality factors. Now, this is another thing that we have to understand. Why is the law of demand so important? Because whenever a company is thinking about a price hike on a product, it would typically expect the demand to come down. As you are increasing the price, the demand will come down. As a result of it, they want to estimate the price elasticity and substitution effect. So moment a product is going to go up beyond its level the company needs to understand it will go to a loss why because consumers will not immediately accept the price and buy they will try to look in for substitution effect there they will try to find products which are at cheaper level so the company needs to understand if i'm going to increase the price of one product i should be ready to take that market shock because it not be absorbed immediately but on the other side, once that price gets accepted and the demand starts pulling up, it's going to be a huge revenue for the company to come in. Now, next thing, what is an example? We are going to talk about the prices of gasoline that plunged down during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. And then what happened once the oil prices, you know, it turned out the decline, price decline served as a, you know, a great supply factor there. And suddenly when the prices started going up again, the suppliers started making a very good money in terms of the gas and petroleum business. Now, the bottom line is that 
it reflects two central important relationships so without the law of supply and demand economics is never complete so always you need to keep in mind the law of supply and demand will play a central role in deciding a product's price a commodity's resource and its usefulness so it is always essential how the demand and supply in the market matches and we also need to say all the players within the market will always think about this factor so the future conditions are purely dependent on this supply demand function with this i come to the end of this particular session i hope and believe that all the factors that have been spoken here in the session will be of a great help to you both in terms of theory as well as in the practical walk of life in the upcoming sessions we would be talking about the different kinds of utility market structure and how business economics really gets shaped up by these factors but until then stay tuned stay blessed Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.